I've got a little riddle for you, if you'll allow me. Let's take a piece of grid paper and draw a line at a random angle starting and ending on the grid points. This one looks alright. Cool. Now I have a question for you. What angle is this? Hold on. What do you mean? That makes no sense. 3, 2, E4. What? You heard me. How was I supposed to know that? You didn't draw the little angle symbol, I don't know which way the line is facing, and there. Happy? What? Don't worry, this will make sense soon. Fair warning, this video might be a bit more technical than the main video, but I've got you. I'll keep the math light and the ideas hefty. This video is a supplementary video to the episode on AI steering. If you haven't watched that video yet, go watch that first as it'll help set the foundations of what we're about to discuss. Oh, but make sure you come back after. I'll wait. Good to go? Perfect. All right, all right, just skip to the pretty pictures, Cartman. Don't worry, we'll get there. I've got a lot of pretty pictures to show this time. This will be a fun day where we actually finally get to talk about trigger, tr tr trigger, tr tr cart math. If you don't remember your math classes, don't worry, you're in cart class now. Before we get to the complicated stuff, I need to make sure we're all on the same wavelength here. So let's discuss Super Mario Kart's, and more generally the SNES's, coordinate system. You've probably been accustomed to the bog-standard XY coordinate axes for a while. I mean, they're everywhere. I even use them in my videos or graphs. But, what if I told you they don't actually need to be like that? What if I told you it's easier if you flip the Y axis the other way around? Unless you're using OpenGL! You shush! Contrary to what you may have been taught, the coordinates of a system do not always need to be like what you saw in school, with the X axis pointing right and the Y axis pointing up. In fact, there are a lot of cases where this actually makes things harder. One such case is computer graphics for, say, a CRT. For this application, it's actually much more useful to us if we flip the y-axis so it points downwards. In this new system, when we increase our horizontal position, we go to the right, like usual. However, when we increase our vertical position, we go down. It's kind of like battleship coordinates. Now that we have our coordinate system in place, a few things are going to get messed up. For one, there's the cardinal directions. Usually we think of north as positive y, but now it's negative y. Actually, angles in general are kind of messed up, but to fix angles first we need to understand them. So let's talk about angles. I, I promise this is more interesting than it sounds. Super Mario Kart, in most cases, stores an angle as a signed word value that ranges from negative 180 degrees to positive 180 degrees. Starting with 0 degrees as north, a positive angle moves clockwise from north and a negative angle moves counterclockwise. Since a word is 2 bytes, the number of possible values for an angle is 65,536. This means we have a resolution of around 5 thousandths of a degree. This gets a bit messy to keep track of, so what we can do instead is create some new unit to be able to keep track of things a lot easier when measuring values. Instead of splitting up a circle into 360 equal portions to create a degree, we split up the circle into 256 equal portions. I'll call one of these sections a hex degree, and it will be our base unit for angles. Splitting up our circle like this means that we can take the top byte of our angle and treat that as our hex degree value, and the bottom byte can be treated as a fractional portion of the hex degree. Increasing the top byte by 1 will increase the angle by 1 hex degree and increasing the bottom byte by 1 will increase the angle by 1 256th of a hex degree. It's a little more complicated for us humans, but for a computer, it's a lot easier. In this system, we can see that east is plus 4000 hex degrees, and west is minus 4000 hex degrees. Really, the west value is C000 hex degrees, but I'll call it negative 4000 hex degrees, just so it's easier to think about for now. South is both plus and minus 8000 hex degrees, but in practice this is thought of as negative 8000 hex degrees, due to the way that sine hex values are represented. Ugh, can we get to the interesting stuff already? Okay, fine. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of some really cool stuff. Up until now, all of what I have discussed is general programming principles that can apply to really any game. But now I want to talk about something that Super Mario Kart specifically does that is, in my opinion, pretty neat. If you've ever worked on programming physics stuff, you'll recognize something called the heading function, or more commonly, ATAN2. Okay, uh, one more <coughs> tangent real quick, and then we'll head back to Mario Kart. 
The ATN2 function is a wrapper for the arctangent function, but with some extra fluff to make it much more easy to use and understand. You see, we have a way to convert from Cartesian x and y coordinates to polar angle and length coordinates, but it has an issue. You can obtain this angle by using the formula the angle is the arctan of y over x. Let's say you have these two coordinates representing your velocity. Velocity 1 is the coordinate negative 2, 1, and velocity 2 is the coordinate 2, negative 1. Clearly, these velocities are pointing in opposite directions, so they should give two different angles. Well, not exactly. If you plug these values into the arctan function, you get that both are quote-unquote facing the same way. This is a big problem. Also, what happens when your x velocity is zero? Uh-oh, another big problem. ATAN2 solves both of these problems by returning the accurate direction and not giving issues when your x-coordinate is small or zero. So finally, finally, it's time for some Mario Kart. The system Super Mario Kart uses for ATAN2 is actually pretty clever, but also has some weird quirks to it. Let me show you super quickly the special saucy table Super Mario Kart uses for ATAN2. I'd like to state here that the internal table is a 64 by 64 table, but for the sake of ease of viewing, I'll be explaining as if Super Mario Kart used a super small 8x8 table instead. This is just to make things a lot easier for us to visualize, but keep in mind going forward that this represents a 64x64 table. Now what the heck is this table, and what does it mean? To explain, let's try to build up our own ATAN2 function intuitively, and see how we can optimize it. Okay, so first off, we'll need a table where we can input some x and y values. I'll be speaking as if these values represent an x and y velocity, as it should make things a little more intuitive. So, naive approach, let's overlay our grid centered on the coordinate plane. Now let's hard code the angles you would obtain if you were to have the velocity lying each of these tiles. Hmm. Well this kinda works I guess, but we never have a case where we can just drive straight in the x or y direction. But let's just start writing our ATAN2 function just to see what happens. Okay, a little hand wavy for now on that convert xy velocity to grid xy. We'll get to that in a moment. However, this line gets the proper angle from the grid based on the grid x and y values. Little problem though. We can't get an angle that's straight north, south, east, or west. Well, there's a couple ways to solve this, but first recall the special thing about ATAN2, that it is able to handle vectors with an x velocity zero just fine. So why not check if our x or y velocity is zero and handle that accordingly? Let's update the code so that if x is 0 and y is positive, we're facing south. If x is 0 and y is negative, we're facing north. Remember, we flipped the y axes. Since we've handled x, why not do the same for y? If y is 0 and x is positive, we're facing east. And if y is 0 and x is negative, we're facing west. Oh, and just in case x and y are both 0, we'll return a special flag that says, Hey, uh, what are you trying to do here? <laughs> okay, so we got our arctan function, right? We're done here. Well. Uh, no. We need our way to convert our x and y velocity to the grid points. As of right now, this would only support eh, 97 different inputs for velocities. Meanwhile, we need to support around, uh, I don't know, what, 4.2 billion? Sounds like we've got some work. Okay, well, let's make some observations. Look at these two velocities here. These two input velocities should give you the same angle, right? So what if we took this big arrow and divide the x and y velocities by two? should get the same arrow, right? Let's do it. Awesome, exactly what we wanted. Now, just to make sure, let's double the size of the small arrow and make sure it lines up with the big one. Uh, okay, what's going on here? Well, it's time to get a little technical. Dividing and multiplying by two are very, very fast operations on a computer due to something called bit shifting. I'll provide a very, very quick and simple explanation here, but if you want to know more about bitwise operations, I'll leave some documents in the notes in the description. For now, all that's important is that there are two operations generally called shift left and shift right. What this operation does in reality is it takes the binary representation of a number, takes the bits, and moves them all to the left or to the right by one. If a bit gets pushed outside of the boundary of the number, that bit disappears. Okay, not really, it becomes the carry flag, but that doesn't matter right now. Here, let's take this number, 7574, which looks like this in binary. Now let's see what happens if we bit shift right once. Convert this number back to decimal, and we see that it's 3787, which is exactly half of 7574. Awesome, so if we bit shift the number left again, we should double it, right? 
So let's bit shift left 7,574. And we see that it becomes 15,148, which is exactly double of 7,574. Cool. The plus side of this is that usually division and multiplication are very slow, but if you only need to divide or multiply by a power of 2, it's super quick. Makes sense. So what happened before with the arrows not lining up? Well, remember I said that if the bit gets pushed outside, it's pretty much deleted. This means that if your rightmost bit is a 1 and you shift right, you don't exactly get half the original number. You lose precision by 1. Likewise, something similar happens with bit shifting left, but that doesn't matter right now. So what happened is that this big arrow here is actually just slightly more than double the small arrow in the y direction. When we shrink the arrow down, we end up with the same as the smaller arrow since we lost that bit of the precision. However, if we try to match up the smaller arrow to the bigger one, we don't necessarily know if there was a loss in precision. We just doubled the size. So why is this important? Well, it allows me to explain how we can condense all the possible combinations of x and y velocities into a single table, by scaling the input vector down. The general idea is this. We have our table of angles, right? Well, what if an arrow is outside of this table? We know that if we divide the x and y bars by 2, we get an arrow that is pretty much the same direction as the original arrow. Okay, so what if this arrow is outside the table? Well, we do the same thing. Keep shrinking the coordinates by bit shifting right until the arrow fits inside the grid. So let's update our code. If you can see these two funny looking symbols here, this is basically telling the computer, hey, bit shift to the right by one. And these two little lines around the GX and GY, that's absolute value because we haven't checked if our value is positive or negative, but we are checking if the value is greater than four here. We could check if it's also less than negative four, but don't worry, we're gonna fix this soon. Perfect, now we're able to cover all 4.2 billion angles though it does leave a lot to be desired. Absolute valuing during a loop is annoying, and we still have a weird conversion since we don't have negative grid values and need to make the offset in the table and the shift doesn't work like that. Is there anything else we can do to make this better? Why, of course! We're actually wasting a lot of space, and we can make this table 25% as large to get the exact same effect we have here. We just need to make the use of symmetry. Let me draw four arrows for you. Notice that all four of them have the same distance from the x-axis and the same distance from the y-axis. And they also have one more thing in common, the relative angle to the x-axis. What's nice about this is that we can easily transform one arrow to all of the others with quick operations. So theoretically, if we have this arrow up here, we can flip it over the x-axis and then the y-axis to line these two up precisely. If we can calculate the angle for this arrow and then keep track of which of these four arrows we're actually looking for, we only need data for one quadrant. Lucky for me, that's exactly what's done in Super Mario Kart. The Arctan table stores data for only one quadrant, quadrant one, with positive x and positive y values, and keeps track of which of the four quadrants the original vector was in, so they can easily calculate four times as many points. This also means our 8x8 table covers more angles, and has a finer resolution, since before we basically had the equivalent of a 4x4 table. So now we have everything that we need to build our function up. Step one, check if either of the inputs is zero. If so, do the quick return method. Step two, keep track of the original quadrant the vector comes from, then flip until both coordinates are positive. Step three, shrink the resulting arrow by 50% until both X and Y are under the size of the table. Step four, grab the offset angle and then add or subtract it from the cardinal directions based on the quadrant. Okay, we've got to be done by this point, right? What else could you do? This works perfectly. Well, apparently the developers thought there should just be one last thing. And arguably, it means that half of our Arctan table is never used. Crazy, huh? Well, it comes from one more symmetry, and that's the symmetry around this line here. If you notice, by swapping the x and y coordinates, you can reflect the arrow about that diagonal line, and convert angle from the y-axis to angle from the x-axis. Since our table is based off the angle from the x-axis, we should try to make all arrows in this section become arrows in this section. We can check which section the arrow is in by comparing the y value to the x value. If the y value is bigger than the x value, then it's in the bad section and we need to flip it. Let's adjust our code. And we have our replica of Super Mario Kart's clever ATAN2 function. Pretty neat, huh? 
Now, this isn't exactly the code that's used, it's slightly more optimized for readability, and the actual code that's used resembles something a little more like this. But it's in 65C816 assembly, so it uses a little more tricks. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I know this was a little more in-depth and more technical than the main video, so thanks for sticking around. If you weren't able to fully understand the topic the first time, don't worry, I personally had to rewrite this script around 4 or 5 times because each time I checked up on one of the details of the Arctan function I'd find something completely wrong. So there's no shame in going back and watching through a few times until it really clicks. In the meantime, I'd like to thank my patrons for making it possible for me to keep producing things like this. If you'd like to support the channel as well as receive exclusive perks, like being able to access these videos a week early and your name appearing at the end of the video, for as little as a dollar a month, consider becoming a patron. It seriously helps support the channel and allows me to make better stuff for you all. And as a treat for those of you still watching, here's a funny little bull board to celebrate Pikmin 4. For now, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time under the hood.